Cannabis Conference is the premier conference dedicated to commercial cannabis growing. And after taking a year off due to all of Las Vegas shutting down, it's back this year at the Paris Las Vegas Convention Center with a ton of educational panels on the science and art of commercial growing, as well as an expo floor with a ton of companies showcasing their new products. This was one of the two major events I was pretty excited to finally be able to attend in person this year. So let's take a look today at some of the products being showcased here. While the expo floor was almost all exclusively catering to the commercial market, a lot of these products can be used by the residential grower. And like most years, the bulk of the companies here are showcasing lighting products. So let's go over first some of the more interesting lighting designs I saw here. Hi, my name is Zenayat Nur Muhammad. I'm with Saren Energy. Uh, we have a product line called Serin Green, which is focusing on marijuana growth. Uh, I'm the president, I'm also in charge of product development, so I'm glad uh, we are talking about our products. We have some unique features of our products that I'd like to talk about. This right here is our 960 watt uh, grow light. It has some unique features that I want to just point out. First, typically a lot of lights cannot daisy chain in terms of power. This lights that we have can daisy chain from one power out to the others. So what that allows you to do is it allows, saves a lot of work for the electricians who has to drop uh, the junction box and the lines for each line, uh, which you don't have to do. It also obviously has the uh, data cables that connect and daisy chain from one to the other, which is then hooked up to the control system, which can be Bluetooth and mobile activated. Uh, you can collect connect up to 2,000 devices uh, on that uh, control systems. Uh, it monitors the moisture level, the temperature level, uh, the intensity of the light. You can control the intensity of the light as well. Uh, another unique feature that we have is the UV bars and the IR bars that are introduced in, in a modular way. So these are completely modular, which can be introduced later on or at the early on. And what happens is when you have the UV A lights on, which essentially what it is trying to do is trying to mimic the sun, and it actually increases the THC and the CBD in the plants. To understand what we're trying to do, we're trying to mimic the sun, uh, which is the, the most uh, sort of the potent uh, sort of provider of light and photosynthesis, uh, which allows the plants and any vegetation to grow. So if you imagine UVA, UVA is being emitted typically during the peak hours during the when the sun is at, at the peak of its of, of, of its horizon where uh, during the midday or 1 or 2 p.m. in the afternoon and that's where the UVA levels uh, are high so you typically want to turn on the UVA when when the sun would have the maximum UVA and we recommend about 2 hours a day is sufficient uh, our control systems allow for multiple controlling uh, control systems within a light. So for example, you can have the UVA turn on and off for two hours and while the light is co being controlled by the same controller but a different channel and you can have it dimmed or at full maximum capacity uh, during the full time of the day. So that's another feature uh, that we've added. The other uh, feature that we have is what we call the IR bar. And the purpose of the IR bar is essentially is to produ it produces heat. Why do we need heat? Well, sometimes we work with uh, indoor facilities where you have ventilations which are right above the certain areas of the grow areas. What that does, it creates a, a sort of a, a cool area. Now the plants need a certain kind of heat to, to, for them to grow optimally. So what that IR does is it creates the heat environment. And again, remember, we are monitoring the temperature of each light and where it is. So we can then 
tell the light to turn the IR uh, uh, lights on when the temperature goes below a certain level, below the optimal level for the plants to grow. So again, that's the purpose of the IR light, is if you have uh, hot spots or cold spots within your uh, indoor grow area, well, it, the IR sort of moderates that and brings the temperature at the optimal level for the plants to grow. So, uh, hello, I'm Colin Bryce with Signify Phillips Lighting, and I'm a plant specialist, so I really help growers adopt LED technologies and do a lot of work in education in the market so that growers know what they're getting into when they install an LED system. So here we have kind of a demonstration piece of three of our different technology platforms. So here we have a top light linear, which is really effective in the greenhouse. It's really slim form factor that you know hugs right up against a trellis, so minimal light interception uh, with daisy chain uh, ability, so you can just run you know, 10 to 30 lights in series with no added components. and. Here we have an inner light that's like an intercanopy light that you can move into the canopy with a crop like cannabis, uh, high wire crops like tomato or cucumber, and, and really basically supplement light into an area of the crop that's um, underlit. So you, you kind of have a more efficient conversion of that light into biomass or growth by supplementing it into that um, more light starved region of the plant. And then kind of our flagship system, the GrowWise control system here um, is, is really applicable in propagation and city farming and kind of low PPFD target applications. But what's really novel about the system is it's tethered to a Philips GrowWise control system, which is a really robust control system software platform that, you know, if we look at the top, middle, and bottom layer, we have them separated into three different control zones. So we can then isolate by zone and program scheduled light recipe changes. So if we want to change the spectrum, to say target a specific physiological or morphological outcome in that crop, you know, we can do that really easily through this software here. And so just kind of fiddling with the middle layer here, if we change this light spectrum to a more white light, which would be you know, really applicable if you're walking into the room and want to be able to view that crop effectively um, and go from a, a less efficient growth spectrum, but be able to take advantage of the, uh, like the scouting and IPM considerations with adding white light, but then if we were to go back to a more red spectrum, you know, we can always do that too. And then of course these sequences can be programmed in time, scheduled, you can set different ramping and fading durations. So depending on if you want instantaneous change or feedback in the system, you can do that. Or if you want to have a kind of slow, gradual change to say mimic a sun, natural sunset or natural sun, sunrise condition, then that can be achieved as well. So this is our interlight here, and Philips is unique in that they've offered an inner lighting or inner canopy lighting solution to the horticultural market for about 16 years. So it's one of our most developed and established products. Found a lot of initial success in the high wire fruit and vegetable market, cucumbers and high wire tomatoes. But what we're seeing recently is that moving it into a cannabis operation can yield the same expected benefits we see in the high wire market. So. If we look at a crop like cannabis, we know we're dealing with a very thick, dense canopy that can often be several feet tall. And if we take light measurements in the canopy from the top to the bottom, we'll see that we're at about 10% of the, of the uh, PPD, PPFD or light intensity that we are at the top of the plant once we get to the lower portion. So move, using LEDs, we're able to you know, reduce the amount of heat a luminaire is putting off into the grow environment. And by product of that, we can move lights into the canopy and be extremely close to that plant canopy itself without risking burning or over stressing that leaf. And with this technology, we did a trial with the inner canopy lighting in Canada, where a grower dimmed their HBS by about 25% and then added about the 10% of the overall light that they had before back into the canopy. So they were at about a 15% reduced light intensity overall, but they'd moved some of that into the canopy using this lighting. And what they found in the trial was they actually increased their yields by using less light because they moved light into a desaturated zone or unsaturated light uh, area for that plant. So what we learned from that trial was that lights more efficiently turned into growth in a crop like cannabis when you supplement light into the canopy and that can be a more cost effective and viable way to increase yields or at least um, create more uniform yield throughout a crop. So the, the grower reported that the quality of those buds throughout the plant were, uni were uniform from top to bottom. 
So, you know, no need to lollipop that crop and go in and spend all the extra labor to, to defoliate, which is only going to hurt your final yield based on, you know, re reducing the total assimilate load in that plant, causing the plant to continuously replenish its own leaf tissues. And so b basically allowing the plant to grow out as it naturally would using this technology. Um, and that grower also had 30% reduced labor costs because they didn't have to go defoliate and they didn't have to clean the HPS as often as they did when in the pure HPS group. So these fixtures are IP66 rated so they can be washed off with a hose. So the, the cleaning and maintenance on these fixtures is much easier as well. So we really do try to recommend for growers to opt in for solutions like this where they can more efficiently apply a portion of their light into an area of the crop that's otherwise unsaturated so that they can more efficiently produce their product and as well more uniformly produce it in the plant's natural architecture. So I think it's a really a win-win application method, especially in a crop like cannabis. Hi guys, my name is Lewis with Grow Pro Solutions and today I just want to show you a few new things that are really, you know, separating us from a lot of the competition in the market right now. So one thing that we offer, you know, that a lot of people in the market don't really offer is a luminous LED chip. And that's actually a luminous chip by Philips brand. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what we have. Each of these lights that we carry are all filled with diodes that are typically about double the competitors. So we can reach the same efficiency, which is about 2.7, using the Philips luminous chips instead of the Samsung that people are typically used to using. We do also offer a very new light in the market that not a lot of people have seen and that's a green light for nighttime use. So if you're, let's say, in the night growing and you have to go inside to water or to move something, you cannot turn on the lights. So this light is made so that way you could go on, turn it on, and not disrupt your cycle. It also has an emergency battery, so if the power were to go off, this light stays on. Outside of lighting, the only other products I saw that could be used in the residential setting were the grow supplies. So let's take a look at some of the things that caught my attention. Scott Johnson with Riceland Foods here to talk about PBH rice hulls from Riceland. PBH rice hulls are an amendment. They're an alternative per to perlite. They're just a more natural, renewable, sustainable material. Uh, PBH rice hulls are also uh, registered OMRI, uh, so you can have the organic uh, registration. Uh, PBH rice hulls of mend, peat, core, or bark, or a combination thereof. Uh, it really is equal to perlite as far as performance. Uh, the benefits are uh, PBH rice hulls are just a more natural, renewable material, uh, more sustainable than perlite is. And uh, usually, uh, depending on where you're located in the U.S. or Canada, uh, where we are less expensive than perlite uh, per cubic foot or cubic yard. What's up everybody, Ari here from Dynomyco. In case you have not picked us up yet, this is the most explosive mycorrhizal inoculant on the planet, hands down. And that's why it comes in this amazing dynamite stick also, to go along with all of our other sizes of the pouches. Basically, uh, Dynomyco is a mycorrhizal inoculant. Uh, mycorrhizal fungi associate with plants, about 90% of all the plants on the planet. And they allow your plants to absorb more nutrients more water and to access them a whole lot more efficiently. They work fantastically well with cannabis plants, whether you're in cocoa, whether you're in soil, a cocoa soil mix, hydro systems even, depending on your system. All of these can greatly benefit from associating with mycorrhizal fungi. Dynamica, what sets it apart is a high number of propagules, of viable propagules, and that's basically the strength of the product. So the higher the concentration of propagules in a product, the more likely you are to colonize the roots and the more likely then you are to have those roots be able to pull in more nutrients. So that's what you want to look for when choosing a mycorrhizal inoculant, high concentrations of propagules per gram, and we have got them. So we've got super vigorous strains of 
fungi inside Dynomyco. If you're in the U.S., you can find two strains of fungi in the product. If you're in Canada, it's a single species, and that's due to regulations, but it's a whole other story. That's with the Canadian market. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, give it a shot. Like so many other growers that I've told, once you do try it, you'll never grow without it again, and we have gotten thousands upon thousands of growers now who have switched over from not using anything at all or using another mycorrhizal inoculant and they're coming over and using it and having just fantastic results with it. So try it out, grab a sample at your local grow shop and if you don't have a local grow shop and you want to get samples, reach out to us, info at Dynomyco or on Instagram. So have a wonderful day, happy growing everybody, peace and love. Hey Dan, well thanks for stopping by here. So I'm Lars, so we're introducing the hemp pot here at the cannabis show. And what the hemp pot does really quickly is the system reduces the temperature of the soil mix by up to 25 degrees if you're out in the sun. So, uh, you know, instead of having a soil mix that really shuts down the growing of your plant, this allows you to keep growing, number one. Number two, it allows air pruning, natural air pruning, not like any plastic pot and, and, and stuff like this. This is a U.S. patented product made in the U.S., made for the U.S. growers. It allows for 100% air pruning for your, for your plant. And what it does is, once you get the air or the, the roots going, it'll, they'll keep producing feeder roots. So what it gives you, it gives you the ability to just keep controlling the growth of your plant. And that's what really what the hemp, do, hemp, hemp pot does. So today I'm showing three sizes. I've got the one and a half gallon. I would use the one and a half gallon against any other product up to a five gallon. The three gallon I would use against any other product up to a seven gallon. It won't tip over if you're outside, but it will reduce the temperature. The seven gallon here is, well, if you're on a 12 gallon, this is what you want to use. It really reduces your cost, and when you have all the air pruning go on, you don't need that much soil. All you need is to give the power to the roots, and the roots will do the work. There is no touching the floor or the, the ground. You know, you are definitely, you know, in terms of root bound disease, you know, disease issues from, uh, you know, touching the ground. Those, those, those things are not happening in, in, the, in the hemp pot. So you are above the ground, you have air movement going on. So what we're trying to do is to make sure that when you grow, the biggest thing you have is sometimes to run into is wet feet. And the worst thing you have is wet feet for disease. So we want to make sure that you dry out quick on the bottom to make sure that the dry out on the top happens more frequently. And that will also give you better air pruning for your roots. They'll come out up here rather than just go down there where it's wet and you know moist. Hi, I'm Andy from uh, Firebirdus, Director of Marketing there. I wanted to talk about a new product that we've just introduced, which is uh, a wood fiber product, co coir with wood fiber. We've partnered with Profile Product. It's called uh, Firebirdus, uh, powered by hydrofiber. Uh, it's a great inert product. It acts a lot like rock wool, but it's totally organic, and you can you can compost it very quickly and very easily. It's got great aeration and water retention, low bulk density, and it's a winner. It's a product that is used by a lot of cannabis growers, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, vegetable growers, cut flower, you name it. They're getting they're using it because it gives you that aeration, water retention, low bulk density. It's just a great product. So the product can be used as is. It doesn't need to be, you don't need to add anything to it or cut, any, cut anything with it um, to add to it because you get that great uh, aeration, porosity, water retention like I talked about before. Um, it comes in a couple of different varieties. We've got open top bags, three and five gallon open top bags, even one gallon for your, you're making that uh, field of green type of thing and you need, uh, you need that smaller footprint within your uh, grow, we got a one gallon for that. But we've also got grow cubes. 
uh, grow cubes in a 4x4, four four, a 6x6, six six, and an 8x8. Eight eight. So really there's a lot of variety that you can use. You're not really constrained to a certain size. I've got to have a 6 inch or I've got to have an 8 inch. You've got a lot of variety here. Uh, we also have lay flat bags, which are uh, one meter long and half meter long lay flat bags. So really, it's a really versatile product depending on your grow. And that's it for now. But stay tuned, since I'll be attending, I think, the largest cannabis industry expo later this year. So hopefully I'll be able to showcase a lot more cool stuff coming soon.